Welcome back to the Kennedy Dynasty Podcast. I'm your host, Allison, and today I have a really cool episode for you. I recently spoke with Elaine Rice Bachman, who is the current Maryland State Archivist and the curator of the exhibit Jacqueline Kennedy and Henry Francis DuPont from Winter Tour to the White House. This exhibit is at Winter Tour Museum, Garden, and Library, and it's running from May 7th through January 8th, 2023 in Delaware. Elaine also co-authored Designing Camelot with James Archer Abbott. It truly was such an honor to speak with her. I learned so, so much, and I hope that you do too. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Elaine Rice Bachman. Elaine, thank you so much for joining me today. It's my pleasure, Allison. So before we get started, tell everybody just a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do. Sure. Um, I'm Elaine Rice Bachman. I'm actually the Maryland State Archivist. Um, I've worked here at the archives for over 25 years, but I came here after going to graduate school at the Winter Tour Museum for American Decorative Arts. So I came to the state to be the curator of the state's art collection and have grown into the role now as the state archivist. It's amazing. There's a rich history there for you to be able to work in. That's amazing. So I want to note before we get started too, that you are the co-author of Designing Camelot, which I have a copy of because Stuart McLaurin was a guest and gifted me a copy. And it is so beautiful. So it makes sense for you to be working on this exhibit for sure. Thank you. Yes. Designing Camelot is the collaboration between me and co-author James Archer Abbott and Stuart McLaren at the White House Historical Association, they so wonderfully offered to make a new edition of that book in celebration of the 60th anniversary of the founding of the White House Historical Association, which of course was Jacqueline Kennedy's legacy. Jim and I had written that book initially 30 years ago in an early edition. So it was really great for us to get to go back and revisit that research and really bring it to a fresh audience. And and the the White House Historical Association just enhanced it so much with their imagery. Um, it's, It's really beautiful. We're very proud of it. It is so beautiful. It stays on display in my living room at all times. So it's one of my favorites for sure. It totally (laughs) is. Perfect to pick up and flip through. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's get started talking about the exhibit. Will you tell the story of Jackie's first initial visit to Winter Tour? Sure. Well, Jacqueline Kennedy came to Winter Tour for the first and only time on May 8th, 1961, to see what Mr. DuPont had done there in in his museum. I mean, for those who aren't familiar with Henry Francis DuPont, in 1961, he was the premier collector of American decorative arts. He had spent his life collecting. He had turned his ancestral home at Winter Tour into a museum period room house of 175 rooms filled with American antiques set into architectural settings. And so when she was knew that she wanted to enhance the White House interiors, which we can talk about why she wanted to do that, she knew she needed to partner with someone who had this gravitas and this academic background so that she would not be perceived as a first lady coming in and redecorating the White House. She was only 31 years old when she came into the White House. Mr. DuPont was almost 80. So, you know, here is this odd partnership of the two of them, but he really brought all the gravitas, all the scholarship that she needed. Between them, they knew so many donors and collectors. They put together a committee, an advisory committee to really guide the whole project. And so they had gotten started with that almost immediately upon coming into the White House. So she and Mr. DuPont had already been working together a couple of months when she came to to Winter Tour and made this wonderful trip up to Delaware with three other people who were on her committee, including Jane Reitzman, flew the Kennedy's private plane, the Caroline, up from Washington after they had had this wonderful reception that morning for Alan Shepard, who had just gone into orbit. Wow. So there was a reception that morning at the White House for the astronauts and their wives. Then she and her small party got on the Caroline, came up to Delaware and were met at the airport by Mr. DuPont and his you know, Rolls Royce and brought out to the museum where they had a luncheon with the board of trustees. And then this two and a half hour tour of the period rooms, which is, you know, such a legend at Winter Tour because here she was, the first lady coming Mr. DuPont was very private like she was, so there are very few photographs of that day, but she was so knowledgeable herself and so interested that the senior curator at the time, John Sweeney, who has passed away now, but he was a wonderful source for me when I was a student in talking about this, she was so focused on 
on French furnishings and French decorative arts that she was literally referring to the decorative arts that she was seeing in French terms. Mm. So it was really a, a cool memory to, to think about. But she had this wonderful tour and then spent the um, afternoon resting at Mr. DuPont's cottage and then had a dinner uh, where she famously uh, had to leave before the last course was served and left, left her purse under her chair. Oh, wow. And it was one of Mr. DuPont's assistant curators who surprisingly got invited to the dinner that night, Charlie Hummel. He and his wife literally had to get in their cars and chase Secret <sighs> Service down Route 52 in Delaware so with this, this handbag and, and <laughs> hand, hand, it, hand it out their window and, and she got it back. But anyway, it's sort of a legendary visit uh, because uh, by then Mr. DuPont was so involved in what she was doing at the White House. And she really was looking to what he had done there, these historical rooms as to what she could do at the White House. So was he appointed chair of the Fine Arts Committee before the visit or was it after the visit? Before. So the, the White House issued the press release about the formation of the Fine Arts Committee in February of 1961. So literally a month after they moved in, wow. she got in touch with him. Uh, he agreed to be chair and, and they they hit the ground running. That's awesome. Now let's go back then and talk a little bit about why she wanted to restore the White House. Sure. You know, anyone who's read a Jacqueline Kennedy biography knows that she had a very disappointing visit when she was a tourist herself with mm -hmm. her mother and sister and when she was 11 years old. And she just remembered that there wasn't anything of historical significance to see. She felt like she was shuffled through. And she said Mount Vernon and the National Gallery of Art had made a much greater impression on her. So she just knew it didn't feel like the home of a president. And so when she knew she was going to be first lady, she knew that that would be what she would focus on. And uh, she had already sort of had some experience in working with designers and decorators at their home in Georgetown. She was very close to Sister Parish already. Um, she immediately began working with Sister Parish to transform the private quarters of the White House, which of course hadn't had a young family living in them for, since Teddy Roosevelt's uh, administration. And within a couple of weeks, she'd spent the $50,000 that was given to each president to improve the White House. So she knew she needed another method when she was going to start working on the public rooms. And, and that was why creating a fine arts committee, creating a, a foundation of advisors who could help find the right things, but also donate money because, you know, the president's advisors you know, we're very uh, concerned that this would be uh, a taxpayer burden or perceived to be a taxpayer burden, which of course, of course it wasn't. You know, and the reason she needed to do this in the first place was because up until this time, there had been no permanent collection in the White House. There'd been no protection for the furnishings that were there. So over time, various administrations just held auctions or things fell out of fashion. They went into storerooms. So what she found when she moved in was a lot of sort of department store reproductions and a mishmash of some historical things with with modern things and it it just wasn't befitting you know the backdrop of of the presidency as she perceived it should be Right. It's wild for me to think that people after any administration would have just discarded furnishings or anything. That's wild to me. So I completely yeah. understand why she would come in there and want to change that. So I was reading about the exhibit online. It looks incredible. I can't wait to visit myself. So take us through the concept for this exhibit, which kind of is in two parts, isn't it? It is. It yeah. is. So, you know, it was such an honor to be asked to guest curate this exhibition, because as I mentioned, I went to graduate school at Winter Tour and, and Winter Tour is, has a graduate program um, for studying American decorative arts. It's really a curatorial training ground and you have to write a thesis in your second year. And, and I rather unusually chose a topic that was uh, the 20th century in wanting to write about this the role that Winter Tour played and Mr. DuPont and Mrs. Kennedy's relationship. It was really unusual at the time, I actually had to get special permission to write a Winterthur thesis about a modern topic like that. But that was the seeds for working with Jim and collaborating on designing Camelot to really tell this whole story. So Winterthur had never reflected on that story itself in an exhibition. And again, as the 60th anniversary was coming up for the television tour, which is really the touchstone for so many Americans um, for the Kennedy administration, for Mrs. Kennedy, they wanted to mount this exhibition. And so I was asked to do this. So what it does, it really draws on the Winterthur archives through the hundreds of letters that Mr. DuPont and Mrs. Kennedy exchanged all the letters of the advisors, all the documentation of what they were doing. It's an archival show, but we had tremendous loans from the Kennedy Library, 
um, from Mount Vernon, from the Philadelphia Museum of Art to, to loan some of the objects that, ha- that they had loaned to Mrs. Kennedy early on in the White House restoration. So it's in part a, an archival show that tells that foundation story of Wintertour's role. And then it sort of takes you through three iconic rooms of the White House, the green room, the blue room, and the red room, and recreates them in a vignette way to show the sort of textiles that were used, the design ideas that were presented to her, why certain styles were chosen. I think the designers did a really great job sort of presenting these as one might approach a decorating project in your own home. If, if you had, you know, 15 foot sure. ceilings and, and, you know, not on the grand scale, most of us are not working in the grand scale they were, but showing, you know, how do you take a, a room and, and give it a historical integrity through objects, through, through the documentation of the kinds of fabrics you're using. Um, and so I, I hope that it's seen as a really collaborative process that it was, and you sort of see the final result and, and what it meant to people. That's awesome. Uh, it seems like you can just really engross yourself in the room and feel like you're there. Um, talk about the Jackie's Footsteps exhibit, too. That walks through the actual home, doesn't it? Yes. So when you come to Winter Tour, the exhibition is in the galleries portion. But when you come to Winter Tour, you should absolutely go in the house itself and take a tour. And the guides there and the interpreter staff have created a tour that is walking in Jackie's footsteps. So when she came in May of 1961, We know the route that she took because um, Charlie is still alive to tell us and and Mr. Sweeney was able to tell me years ago. So we know the rooms that she saw and some of the impressions she she received from them. So visitors actually will go through those same rooms and there are images up there of her visit and some of the objects that they talked about and some of the things that relate to White House rooms. So I hope it's a really immersive experience and then you come and see the exhibition and you really are time traveling back you know, to 1961 when all of this was was new to people. What are a few of the artifacts that are your personal favorites that you loved being able to display for others to see? Well, I have to say that from the very beginning, it was my vision that this exhibition would revolve around the television tour. Because, you know, I know that that's what my mother talked about my whole life. I wasn't born in 1963, but she uh, remembered, you know, this, this event it's what really popularized Jacqueline Kennedy across the country. So I wanted the tour to be the focus. So in the center of the of the room, as you first walk in, we have um, on loan from the Kennedy Library, the reproduction of the suit that Mrs. Kennedy wore in the television tour. It was an American made copy of a French design. Um, I think there's an interesting connection to some some recent discussions about, you know, do you take period clothing out of a house Mm -hmm. and display it or wear it, if you will? The Kennedy Library does not display her original suit that is archived and cared for, but they've loaned us what they do have on display, which is her red suit, which, of course, people watching the tour wouldn't have even had known was red because it was a black and white. But that sits at the center, along with two period vintage television cameras um, from CBS that are loaned from the Museum of Broadcast Technology. So you see sort of the the television technology of the time, you know, these cameras that are as tall as she is that were following her around in the White House. So I think you have this immersive experience and you sort of immediately have a touchstone to to this cultural phenomena and then surrounding it is sort of the backstory. So it was exciting to see that idea come to life. Absolutely. Um, I saw too, when I was reading that winter tour has just taken such good care in putting Jackie throughout the entire museum. I saw that there was foods that she liked in the cafe. There's merchandise you can buy. All these kinds of things have just become such an immersive experience to visit here. So what are a few of the key takeaways and things that you want people to learn when they visit? I think I'd like them, you know, for so many people, Winter Tour is sort of an obscure place that um, people know about it who are into American decorative arts. It's certainly also its gardens. The horticultural historians understand the importance of that. But maybe they don't see it as a place that ever had any meaning on a national scale. And I think when Mrs. Kennedy you know, put out that press release saying that she was going to restore the interiors of the White House, and the chairman of her committee was Henry Francis DuPont of Winter Tour. You know, that was the first time people were hearing the name of this place. And then it's, you know, it's the story of, of Winter Tour and its influence on the White House sort of became part of that national phenomenon of why, why do objects matter? 
Why do furnishings matter? Why did it matter what was in the White House? And I think it was Mr. DuPont's scholarship and his sort of becoming a, an academic collector who cared about the social history behind objects was an influence on Mrs. Kennedy and subsequently helped all of, you know, hopefully all Americans sort of take pride in the interiors of the White House and, and have a better understanding of, of the integrity of, of furnishings and objects. So, you know, obviously I'm an object person, I'm a curator. I appreciate the historical interiors, but I think she really democratized that in a way, which is interesting because, you know, she was not of the people herself. You know, she certainly was coming from a very rare place in society. And, and the fact that her sort of doing this on behalf of the American people helped popularize her, I, I think is, is, is a really important legacy and Winter is a part of it. So I guess I'd like people to, to remember that and also to learn about it for the first time. That's fantastic. I can't wait to visit. So you're going to have a visitor from Nashville, no doubt. Excellent. Please let me know when you're coming. I'd love I will. To there. <laughs> Absolutely. And I know the audience will be so excited to learn about it and visit as well. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you giving you're me welcome. this time with Thank you. you very much. Thanks for listening. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you like the episode, please rate it five stars and leave a positive written review. Make sure you're subscribed to our newsletter by tapping the link in the episode's description. Have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Come on and vote for Kennedy. America's strong Kennedy He just keeps rolling